there's a lot of people out there at the moment who are going into the council, uh, watching what the council does at their meetings, and then coming out and reporting on them on, say, a YouTube channel, so that the rest of the public in their town knows exactly what's going on. And these are called Council Watch, and they're very good. There's a lady called Rachel Matthews in Colchester who's doing exactly the same thing. And in fact, she started it off. And I think it's absolutely laudable. We should be reporting what the councils are doing. And you may remember, oh, about a year ago now, I had this concept, this idea of a place called Biggleswick. Now, Biggleswick doesn't actually exist. It was an invention of my mind. And I painted the picture that Biggleswick, this wonderful, lovely little place of quintessential English town of Biggleswick, nestled between the two counties of Bestfordshire and Goodham. And I thought that most people would get that this was just made up, although some people actually thought it was a real place. And the thing about Biggleswick is the people of Biggleswick noticed that their council were bringing in some very strange ideas. They were bringing in these 15-minute cities concepts. They were following the net zero agenda. They were reducing the speed to 20 miles an hour. They were putting up 5G towers. They were putting out a whole load of surveillance technology. And the people of Biggleswick thought, hang on a minute, uh, nobody's asked us if we want these things. These seem to be coming down through government and then being laid on and paid for by the people of Biggleswick. And quite rightly, the people of Biggleswick said, I'm not sure that we like this. And they all got together. And in my allegory, they went to the council and they said, actually, we don't want this. Thanks very much. Very kind of you to offer it, but we don't want it. Thank you. Goodbye. And the council said, hmm, very interesting, but you're going to get it anyway. And so the people of Biggleswick said, well, are we going to stand for that? Are we, are we slaves? Do we have to have this? And they decided, you know, we're going to set up our own council. And the money that we were paying to the council in our council tax, we're going to divert that and pay for another council. And so they set up another council. And actually what happened to the council in Biggleswick, it became, well, it became redundant. Uh, it was impotent. And as I said at the end of that video, it's like a dictator. Once a dictator has no followers, he is but a clown. Well, that's all very well. And people laughed at it and said, oh, yes, if only we could do that, wouldn't it be great, blah, blah, blah. And then I met a man who gave me some little bit of information and I suddenly went bing. And he reminded me there was something called the Statute of Monopolies, 1623, I think it was. An act that was passed, oh, centuries ago, centuries ago, but has a huge amount of relevance. Let's see now which button have I got to press to get it on, on the screen. Here we go. Here is the Encyclopedia Britannica with a little bit. I haven't paid for the uh, actual article, so we can't get into it. But here is in common law. Uh, the Statue of Monopolies, 1623, confirmed that monopolies were contrary to common law, but made exceptions for patentable inventions. And the statute of 1601 became the basis of the privileges enjoyed by charitable trusts. OK, fair enough. But let's have a look elsewhere. Here we go on legislation.co.uk, which is uh, obviously in the UK. Statute of Monopoly 1623. And if you read all the blurb and you can understand it, you will understand that it's actually saying pretty much as I understand it, that you can't have monopolies of one business over another because that is unfair trading. So in other words, you couldn't just have one company that owns all the train stations. Otherwise, they could just put the price up and, and you're stuck. One company owning all the water in the, in the or delivering water because they could put the price up and then everything. They couldn't have one company that owns all the electricity because they could control the price of the electricity and there'd be no competition. That competition is good. And we know that, do we not? And we're taught, you know, competition, that's it. The market wins, the market forces, one company against another and all this kind of malarkey. And yet, and yet, isn't it a fact, is it not a fact that actually we have um, a monopoly in our towns of a council, a monopoly in our country of a government, 
a government, one single government. You might say, yeah, but Richard, you know, these are special, you know, uh, uh, assemblies of people. They are in the public interest. They are for the people. They've been set up by we the people. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hang on a second. These are no longer those type of entities. We know now, do we not, that these are companies. They're corporations. They're listed on Dun and Bradstreet. They have a Dun's number. That means they're businesses. That means a business cannot have a monopoly. So if you're in a town and you only have one council and that council is dictating to you some nonsense that you have to abide by, well, doesn't that break the Statute of Monopolies Act, 1623, the statute? Is that not a breach of what we're supposed to have? You can't have a monopoly. And would it not be possible in a place like Biggleswick or your town or village that actually you just say, well, you can't have a monopoly. We need another council so that we can have competition. And what is to stop anybody setting up another business, whether it's limited or recorded or it's just a family run business and calling it a Biggleswick Alternative Council? or whatever the name of your town is. And so actually you could say, ah, oh, hang on a minute, we've got two councils because the councils that we all have, that we think are there for the benefit of the people and are actually businesses and they have their terms and conditions and they're coming around banging on your door saying, give us the council tax. Well, if you've got a breach of the Monopolies Act going on, then you desperately need another council, or at least one other, but you could have several. Why don't we have lots of different councils and who are saying, oh, come to us, this is our terms and conditions, these are the sort of things that we're going to give you, we're going to improve the water and make sure that no company can provide water that contains fluoride, for example. We're going to make sure that there is no surveillance in the cameras watching you, face recognition technology is not happening. We are going to get, make sure that the, the roads stay at the uh, 30 miles an hour in respectful places. We're not going to oust away cars from the roads and barricade the streets with great big flower plots so that ambulances can't get in. We are not going to cause too much problem by having these 5G towers going up. We're going to make sure that any company that wants to provide anything is liable 100% and registered on company's house and will be there in case things happen and are a problem. We're not going to permit great big swathes of the countryside having solar panels or more of these wind farms. You see, if you had competition, another council, another council saying these are the sort of things we do and, well, maybe, you know, there's this council tax that's got to be paid to help run the council uh, run the council and the town maybe people will go actually do you know what instead of paying my council to this council who say they have the authority but they're only a business just like tesco's or mcdonald's or anyone else maybe we should have a second council that is one it's also a business but at least it's saying to you i am a business we are a business and we are going to provide that you pay us some money we will provide all of these things and there it is. And then if you don't like the business, you can take your uh, business elsewhere. Isn't it true that these councils have a monopoly over our land? Should that be the case? Should we have to listen to them? Should we just, just say, actually, do you know what? You're not working for the people. Thanks ever so much for your ideas, but it's very kind. But actually, there's a new business in town and they're offering this. Or actually, there's three new businesses and they're all vying for our attention. And do you know what competition does? Competition is going to provide what the people want, what the market wants, not what the government or the dark forces, the Luciferians, the Satanists, all these people who are pulling the strings of the government and and provide the things that the people want. So maybe this is a way out of it. Maybe this is a way that the business that is the alternative government will say, look, we do need some income coming in, obviously, and we need, do need to have some sort of help, but we're not going to call it a tax because we won't be taxing anyone. We're a business that maybe you can become a, a member of it or you can make donations or you can agree to pay a lot less than these people or you can contribute. You can be part of it. You can become paint the bridges and uh, weed the gardens and do some of the work, maybe contribute to the town in some 
some way, setting up youth theatres, setting up lo lovely places, bringing the bandstand out, having some nice... Are you a, a musician? Don't worry about paying the council tax. Come and sit on the bandstand and play your tuba once a week. That would be absolutely lovely. What about some English country dancing? You're, a, you're a, somebody who can orchestrate that. That would be fantastic. What if this other business was very much people-minded and decided we're going to just have stuff so that people are of this community for the community and have fun and thrive and do great things and put flowers where we want to put flowers not the sort of things that uh, this other council who is being guided and controlled from other people that we don't know about what if our alternative businesses were offering the things that we actually want wouldn't that be the business? Would that not be the kind of council business that you want to support and be part of and improve your town? Seems to me that anybody out there who has any knowledge of business, who knows and understands that these councils are simply corporations who have to go through the corporation type business of contracts and they're not there by the deems of uh, government and the people anymore, that they're operating on a different system. Anybody out there who understands what business is like may well want to set up another business. You could make a killing. And at the same time, you could be serving the county and the people will gently go over towards that business because you are doing the best for the town. And if you didn't, another business would set up in competition and that way you'd eventually get the very best for our towns and our villages. Just an idea.